The new NVIDIA DGX Spark, the 128GB touted as local AI supercomputer for your desktop in a very cute small form factor, has launched and there are some great reviews out. I'm going to come in today and provide you with some numbers on a head-to-head -head comparison. Thanks to the folks at LMSYS put together a spreadsheet with some really good numbers. I wanted to continue that and expand out with the Quad 3090 rig. And let me tell you a little bit about why. So I was checking my feed today and I read this and Mr. Anez Valentik said, this is just sad. The DGX Spark from NVIDIA had such potential to be something special, but not like this. And I kind of feel a little bit the same, but I really want to put like the numbers to the test. And I have watched about 114 minutes of YouTube videos so far. So I'm getting a pretty good feel for the DGX Spark's actual performance numbers right now. There's some other creators that are gonna have some videos out I know in the short term, and I am looking forward to seeing what their performance numbers look like also. But 128 gigabytes of VRAM for five tokens a second on Gemma 3 27B feels kind of useless to be honest, especially for $4,000. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, so they've upped the price. I haven't been following uh, tremendously, you know, closely. And I think I've been pretty public about the lack of bandwidth in the DGX Spark being something that concerned me. And certainly I expressed that feeling to a, a wide variety of people, both on the channel and off the channel. And so the LMSYS org channel here, I'm going to link that in the description below. Definitely go check out their video. Of course, I wanted to make sure, yeah, it was 3,000. That's what I kind of remembered. Now they're saying it's going to be like 4,000 MSRP. So there's also a article and a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet, I went to file and make a copy, which is something you can do on your spreadsheets really easily. And so I've got that all linked down below. So if you want to make a copy also, which I encourage you to do and to test some things out. We can see some more numbers kind of head-to-head -head in different systems and configurations if you share those. So the Quad 3090 rig, there's two variants of it. There's like the $5,000-ish dollar variant, and then there is the cheaper variant that I just recently put together. And the really interesting part is the price on that is $3,827. Still Quad 3090s, still a generous amount of system RAM, but a Ryzen instead of a Epic baseboard system underneath that. So it's actually much more cost efficient and easier to buy. And it's just straight up cheaper. Also, we'll have a lot more on that in the near future. So make sure you hit like and subscribe on this channel. All the parts lists, all the build, all the uh, basics about that are on the website there. I'll link that also down below. But yeah, so we're going to test the same models that were tested out from the LMSYS folks. Now, I'm not going to do every single last one of them, and I'm not going to do the SG Lang. I'm just going to do the Llama. And honestly, myself, I usually would run Llama.C++ uh, underneath the hood, and Llama uses that as well as LM Studio. So GGML is basically what runs most of the kind of intro stack, and then you get into VLLM. I've got videos on that if you're interested in learning about that. And then SG Lang is like another very advanced engine out there, a uh, little bit more difficult and definitely optimized for certain chipsets very, very aggressively. So we're going to be checking out Gemma 3 in a couple of varieties. We're going to be checking out the 12B and the 27B. We're going to be checking out GPT OS S 120B and 20B and Quinn 3 in the 32B with a Q4 and a Q8, which are the same ones that were tested up here. Now, I'm not going to use batch size 1. I'm going to use batch size 256. And there was one thing that I kind of suspect that the full context window was applied when they were testing this. We're going to look at the prefill and the decode, your TG and your PP. You're going to look at your prompt generation and your actual chat generation. Okay, so let's get started with that. We've got our open web UI pulled up. The first one that we're going to check is Gemma 3 12B Q4KM. And we're going to have it start off by telling us about the ATP cycle for cellular biology at the college intro textbook level. And we can watch over here the progress as it loads into the GPU and how many GPUs are needed will be plainly evident. So this is called NVTOP on the right hand side. And this is us remoting into our Quad 3090 rig. You can find the guide to get up and running just exactly like this linked in the description below. And you can see here that this is actually only utilizing one GPU, one of the 3090s for this, and it looks like it's doing a pretty darn good job so far. And the speed of it looks like it is very acceptable, using about 20 gigabytes of GPU VRAM. You can see that kind of 
indicated up there. And the power limit is set to 225 for all of these, which greatly reduces the idle power draw. If you are not using that, you might want to check that out. And so the response tokens per second that we got were 48.16, and the prompt tokens were 1343.9. So I guess I'm just going to go ahead and round, and we'll call that 1344. Okay, next up we're going to go to the Q8, which that's going to be a much larger size. So llama PS, really quick here, and a llama stop this specific model. And we should see that unload over here. Okay, you'll see, yeah, spike there, and then it's done. So next up, the 12B in Q8. And it'll rerun it now at the Q8, and all of these have the full context window, which is 131.072 for our model here. And you can see it kicking up there, and it's definitely using two GPUs at this point, and it is about 28 total, maybe a little bit more than that, of total combined VRAM splitting that between the two GPUs. And this is a good question that generates several several tokens. So this one hit 51.6 response tokens per second. So 51.6 and one. Now we're gonna move on to the next one, which is Gemma 327B, so much larger model in the Q4KM. And it's unloaded out of VRAM. And we'll load it back up here. And you can see the utilization of RAM right now is about 40, a little bit more than that, maybe 41, 42 Gibby bytes total for this to run. And that's at the Q4KM. And that was 38.1 and 254.3. Next up, we're gonna go to the Q8. And so now we've got Gemma 327B IT Q8. And you can see this one definitely reserved all four of the GPUs. And that is 16, about 17 Gibby bytes per each GPU total. And we hit 25.4. And so that wraps up the Gemma 3s. I had Gemma 3 really good for assistant type behaviors. It's a really good kind of office coordinator, if you think of it that way. And very, very high energy and very rah-rah to get behind you. So be mindful of that also. It will blow a lot of blank up your blank. Okay, moving on to GPT OS S120B and 20B. And so, GPT OS S has definitely emerged as one of the primary leaders out there in local inference. A lot of people have questions around this, and a lot of people fell into a specific type of trap that is going to be very well illustrated when we get to the 120B running, which I think you guys are going to find pretty interesting. So, a lot of people ended up going with dual GPU rigs, dual 24 gigabyte GPU rigs in particular. And so you can see it really doing a great job on the explanation here. A lot of latex for the chemistry aspects of it also, which absolutely was kind of what I asked for. And we hit response tokens of 92.8 and prompt tokens of 368. So that is for uh, GPT OSS 120B. Now if we come over here to Olama and we do an Olama PS, 
you can see that we are running 100% in VRAM and using 70 gigabytes. So if you get three GPUs, you've got 72 gigabytes of VRAM. So the secret to running a really great GPT OSS 120B, if this is your primary use case, is three 24 gigabyte GPUs, 3090s still with their 932 gigabytes per second are romper stompers. The only thing better out there is slightly, ever so slightly, the 4090 on inference, and that comes in just a little bit over one terabyte per second, and the 5090, which comes in a lot a bit over that at 1.7 terabytes per second. Of course, if you can afford 5090s, that's definitely way the, the way to go, but that does actually change the price calculation quite a bit. And two 32 gigabyte GPUs is only 64 gigabytes of VRAM. So all of a sudden, you've spent 4,400, 4,500 just on two 5090s. A lot of things that you've got to consider, a lot of trade offs that you have to think about if you are getting into local inference. Olama, what they benchmarked. So, Olama, what I'm benchmarking for you so you can see head to head. GPT OSS 20B. All right, so now we've got GPT OSS. It just says latest here, but that's essentially because they're all uh, FP4. So yeah, you can see single 3090 GPU, 85% uh, process utilization, about 16 gigabytes of MIM usage. And we saw this also benchmarked recently on the 9060 XT, excellent GPU, and also I've done this on several times on the uh, 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. So 16 gigabyte GPU can run the 20B fully in its memory, which is pretty freaking sweet, honestly. So we hit 124 response tokens and 1,073 prompt. And finally, we've got Quinn 3. We're gonna do the Q4 and the Q8, and that is a 40K context window. And we'll start with Quinn 3, 30B, A3B, Q4KN. And again, a model that can fit very easily in a 24 gigabyte GPU. So 24 gigabyte GPUs are definitely a target for very good reasons. And look at a sale. Definitely had some issues with some of the latex formatting, it looks like, though. And the response tokens that we got, 117, and the prompt, 472. And this one can run very well in two 24 gigabyte GPUs. And we got 104 response tokens and 796 prompt tokens. Okay, so we got our information in here. Let's take a look at what the performance differences look like in the same kind of price budget classification, right around $4,000. You can see that we hit better prefill and dramatically better decode. Decode is when it's generating the tokens for you. And 92 versus 11.7, so quite a big difference there. As well, the Gemma 3s, let's start getting into those. The 12B Q4, not that big of a difference. So 48 versus 22, so uh, not that big of a difference really on that. And the prefill looks pretty close also on the Gemma 3s. Now, as soon as we move up to the Q8 in the 12B, we've got 51 tokens per second versus 14.7. So they're going down. That, that actually went up just a little bit, which is kind of something weird. I don't exactly understand, but I did notice this quite some time ago on Gemma 3. And indeed, the Gemma 3 Q8 variants are just, for some reason, very good performers on 3090s. And you can see that our prefill and their prefill were pretty close to each other. They weren't really that far off. 
Moving on to the very popular GPT OS S 20B, that of course being probably one of the most popular for everybody out there and actually a really decent model for people that have just a 16 gigabyte GPU, which is available both in AMD and in NVIDIA for budget-ish class. I mean, say 429 to $360, somewhere in there. You can check the recent videos that we did on those, definitely. But we see 124 tokens per second on the quad rig. And really, it was just using one GPU. So you don't have to have a quad rig for that, just one single GPU. And I mean, if we're talking about what we saw as far as numbers on the 5060 Ti, I believe it was in the 90s. And if we were looking at what we saw as far as performance numbers on the 9060 XT, I believe that was in the 80s, so it was very close. Both of those, all of those, are faster than what you got on the DGX Spark at 49.7. And the prefill is lower. So that one is interesting on the 20B. The prefill does look like it actually really works well on the DGX. So that's one thing to consider. That's probably a architectural improvement of the Blackwell series, is gonna be my guess, but let me know in the comments below what you think on that. Moving on to the Gemma 3 27B, which a really good contender for local use and something that we use quite a bit. And the Q4KM 38.1 tokens per second versus 10.5. So that is a pretty big difference between those two. And that again was not necessarily even utilizing all of the GPU resources. Now, if you're looking at the prefill, this was kind of weird. It was surprisingly low. I mean, it is what it is, but it was surprisingly low at 254 versus the Blackwell DGX Spark at 680. Moving on to the Gemma 327B Q8, we got 25 tokens per second and the DGX Spark only got 4.5. So that is a notable reduction right there. We got actually a surprisingly good 687 on the prefill versus the DGX's 65. If we look next at the Quinn 3 lineup, the 32B Q4KM, you can see that the DGX Spark got 6.2 tokens per second. The Quad 3090 rig hit 117, and that was pretty fast. And if you're looking at the prefill, 100 tokens per second versus 472. And finally, wrapping it up, the Quinn 332B Q8. We got 104, the DGX Spark hit only 3.5, which I don't know, that one it seems it's pretty, it's pretty low. There's possibly the DGX Spark software gets refined a little bit. There's a, always a potential that you can push things a little further. But at the end of the day, what we're looking at is really about 276 gigabytes per second of system bandwidth on the DGX Spark. And any which way you look at it, that's always going to limit your performance. So I think that is my biggest takeaway is in watching all the videos out there, people do mention it, yet the illustrations of how that impacts exactly are not necessarily super clearly presented. So I wanted to try to super clearly present that to you. I would urge you to take a chance, fork the spreadsheet on your end, do your own kind of thing with your own GPUs and drop those numbers in the comments below. Would really look forward to reading those. And definitely a lot of people view GPT OSS as one of the primary things. And like I mentioned, if you're going for a really good experience and you only have a limited budget, 33090s can run the full 120B with full context window. And of course, you won't be seeing me actually doing the review of one of the DGXs because about six months ago, I put this on the website. And this is basically me saying we are not interested in corporate sponsorships or hardware reviews. And thanks, but uh, you know, we're not interested. And that is something that definitely cut down tremendously on the amount of solicitations we were getting. And there is a lot that goes along with taking a sponsorship. And this channel is small. I am trying to keep it incredibly organic and incredibly real and my opinions and not have anything spill into what my opinions are for you. And I wanna give a huge shout out in that exact same vein to all of our channel members, our Patreons and our Buy Me A Coffee people because you guys do step in and fill a gap that many other channels step in and fill with things like sponsorship. Well, actually, they go through everything that they possibly can. But once you start having mouths to feed in your production pipeline, yeah, you've got to start thinking about corporate sponsorships. And certainly, that's not me making digs at them. And it seems like if the DGX Spark is a supercomputer, then what the hell is this thing? Seems like a fair question. I look forward to reading what you have to say down below. Definitely take a chance, check out the recent video that we did on the 9060 XT versus 5060 Ti, really great video. And also you can check out more about the Quad 3090 rig here.